Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to learn how to solve radical equations. And the steps are very simple. The first thing you want to do is isolate one radical to one side of the equal sign, and then square both sides and solve. So let's look at an example. So example number one says the square root of y minus 6 equals 2. And as you can see, one of the radicals is already isolated, all alone, on one side of the equal sign. So now, what did I say we could do next was square both sides. So we're going to put a squared here and a squared here. Now, the squaring a radical right here, see how this radical is here and the squared is here? When you square a radical, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So we're left with y minus 6 equals 4. Now, I'm going to show you why the square and the square root cancel each other out. So let's look at an example over here. Say I have radical 4 and I want to square it. Okay? Radical 4 squared is the same thing as saying radical 4 times radical 4, which when we multiply insides together, radical 4 times radical 4 is radical 16, which is the square root of 16 is 4. So we didn't have to go through all of those processes, but when I square a radical, the square and the square root cancel each other out, and we're just left with the inside. So that applies to this problem here. The square and the square root cancel each other out, and I'm left with what's on the inside. And then we just solve. So we could add 6 to both sides, and this answer is y equals 10. Now I seem to have forgotten the third step, so if we could please write it in. Step three is to check. You must, must, must check these equations because sometimes they don't work out. So when we do a check, we always check into the original equation. So let's write the original. And we're going to plug in what we got for y. We got y was 10. So what is 10 minus 6? You should be telling me 4. Now, what's the square root of 4? You should be telling me 2. Does 2 equal 2? Yes. So this works out nicely. Okay, let's look at a second example. So in example number 2, the radical y minus 3, 4y minus 3, is not isolated on one side of the equal sign. There is something else here. There's this 5. So you want to subtract the 5 to get rid of it. And now we're left with the square root of 4y minus 3 equals 2 minus 5, which is a negative 3. Now that the radical is isolated, we can square both sides. Now the square and the square root will cancel each other out, so we'll be left with 4y minus 3 equals 9, because negative 3 squared is a positive 9. And we can just solve. Add 3 on both sides, divide by 4, y is equal to 3. Now again, we have to check, because if we don't check, we don't know if our answer is correct. So we're going to write the original equation. And we're going to substitute what we just got. for y. We got y was equal to 3. Okay, so now I'd like to see if it equals 2. So let's start with the inside of the radical. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. So 5 plus the square root of 9, I want to see if I get 2. So 5 plus 3, that actually gives me 8, not 2. So this is not a solution. So honestly here, my answer, y equals 3, does not work. So there is no solution. That's why a check is so important. Okay, so we're rejecting x equals 3, and we're writing no solution because it does not work. All right, let's move on to the next example. Okay, so in example number 3, the radical is definitely isolated. And we are going to just straight square. We could square both sides now. Now the square and the square root will cancel each other out here. So we'll be left with 2 minus 2y equals y minus, excuse me, y plus 3 squared. 
Now, this y plus 3 squared is the same thing as writing y plus 3 times y plus 3, so don't forget, we have to double distribute. So, y times y gives me y squared. y times 3 gives me 3y. Three, 3 times y again gives me another 3y. And 3 times 3 gives me 9. And we can bring down everything else. And maybe combine some like terms. 3y plus 3y here is 6y. Now, anytime you have a quadratic equation, an equation that has a y squared, you always want to get it equal to 0 so that we could factor and t-chart. So I subtracted 2 and added the 2y. So that'll give me 0 equals y squared plus 8y plus 7. And we're going to factor this using the AM method because the leading coefficient is 1. So what numbers multiply to 7 that add to 8? Simply 7 and 1. So y plus 1, y plus 7. When we do a t-chart, we would write y plus 1 equals 0, minus 1 on both sides, y equals negative 1. Subtract 7, and we get y equals negative 7. So those are my two potential answers. We could put a box around them and always reject them later, but these are my two potential answers. So now, moment of truth is all about a check, okay? So if you need to jot any of this down, now's a good time to pause the video, um, but I'm going to start the check now. So when we do a check, we always want to write the original equation, okay? So the check, we have to do two this time, so I'm going to write checks on both sides and I'm going to rewrite the original equation twice. So I have radical 2 minus 2y equals y plus 3. 2 minus 2y equals y plus 3. Okay, so what do we have here? We have y is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to substitute a negative 1 every time I see a y. And let's just focus on this check first. So 2 and this negative 2 times this negative 1 is a positive 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. And let's see what happens on this side. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So this works out nicely. Okay, let's check the y value of negative 7. So 2 minus 2 times negative 7 equals negative 7 plus 3. So this is 2 plus 14, which is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. And what do we have here? Negative 7 plus 3. That's actually negative 4. And this is not equal. 4 is not equal to negative 4, so we reject. So our only answer is y equals negative 1. So we sometimes can write a solution as a solution set. So you could put it in little brackets like this. So the solution is x equals negative 1, or excuse me, y equals negative 1. You could write it like this or just like that. All right, let's look at the last example on the page. Now, this example is very unique because there are two radicals. You see how there's a radical on each side? Well, if you look at the steps that we uh, talked about in the beginning, we always have to isolate one of the radicals. So it looks like this is isolated. This one's not because there's a 2 in front. But that's okay. You're never going to be able to isolate them both at the same time. So now we can go straight to squaring. So we're going to square this side, and we're going to square this side. The square and the square root will cancel each other out, and we'll get x squared plus 4. But I know you're probably thinking that the square and the square root will cancel each other out. And that's accurate, but there's a 2 in front. So you actually have to pretend like this is, say it was 2a squared. You would distribute the 2 to both pieces, so it would be 2 squared, a squared. So the 2 is this 2, and the a is this radical. So you have to take the 2 and square it, and then you have to take the radical x plus 4 and square that. So see how the square and the square root will cancel each other here? But you still have to remember to square that 2, which gives me a 4. 
So this is really x squared plus 4 equals 4 times x plus 4 because this square and square root will cancel each other out. So I get x squared plus 4 equals, I can distribute this now, 4x plus 16. And again, now that I have an x squared, I'm going to move everything to one side so that I can factor and t-chart and solve. So I'm going to subtract 4x and subtract 16. So I've got x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Because I've got 4 minus 16 is negative 12, the negative 4x we bring down. And again, we can use add multiply. So what numbers multiply to negative 12 that add to negative 4? You should be thinking x minus 6 and x plus 2. And when we do a t-chart, I'm just going to skip a few steps. We get x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. All right, now let's try the checks. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation. And we're going to substitute our answers. So the first one I got was x equals 6. So 6 squared plus 4 equals 2, 6 plus 4. And let's see what we get here. 6 squared is 36. 36 plus 4 is 40. So square root of 40 is equal to 2 radical 10 because 6 plus 4 is 10. Now, these may not look accurate and true uh, and equal, but they actually are because if you break down the square root of 40, you could break it down into 4 and 10, which is actually 2 rad 10. See how it's the same now? So this one actually does work. So we can put a box around x equals 6. All right, now let's try x equals negative 2. So I have negative 2 squared plus 4 equals 2, negative 2 plus 4. So what's this? Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So the square root of 8 and then 2 radical negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Now are these two things equal? Well, they actually are because, again, if you break up radical 8, it's 4 radical 2, which breaks up into 2 rad 2, which is, in fact, equal to this. So that works. So both of these are a solution. So if you wanted to write your solution like we did before, the solution is negative 2 comma 6. Those are your two solutions. Okay? So just to recap, we did a solution where both problems checked out. We did one where one only checks out. And even on the first page, we did one where there's no solution. So that's why the checks are super important. All right, I hope you learned something. Jot down any questions that you might have, and we'll speak about them in class tomorrow. Okay, have a good night.